Hello and welcome to The Voluntarist. There was an excellent lecture which I have linked below, delivered by Joseph T. Salerno at the Mises Institute in Auburn, Alabama on July 26th this year, so just a couple days ago. Salerno brings up a really important work written by Ludwig von Mises while he was still in Germany in 1920 entitled Economic Calculation in the Socialist Commonwealth. The point which stuck out the most to me as I was watching this lecture was that socialism is not possible without the help of capitalism elsewhere because there are no prices in a socialist nation. In the article, Mises makes the argument that the rational allocation of resources is impossible without economic calculation using actual market prices. Essentially, he's saying that prices communicate so much important information There's no way to make consistently good decisions about how to use resources in the absence of prices. For example, if the construction industry is running low on steel supply because they've started a lot of new projects or something, the price of steel would increase in a free market to communicate that high demand, because the price is just a mechanism for communicating valuable information. As a result, steel factories would do what they could to increase output while the prices were high, in an effort to snag some of that high profit. And it's even possible that some new steel factories would open. In contrast, we look at socialism. Mises argued that socialism abolishes private property and capital goods and natural resources. Since the socialist state is the sole owner of the material factors of production, there can no longer be exchanges. Without exchanges, there can be no market price. Under socialism, therefore, the state cannot calculate the costs of production for the goods it produces. In the absence of economic calculation of profit and loss, socialist planners cannot know the most valuable uses of scarce resources, and therefore, a socialist economy is strictly impossible. And that was uh, Mises' argument. Of course, this entire argument hinges on the fact that market prices can't exist in a socialist economy because there are no real exchanges. It follows that because the state owns all the material factors of production, and because the state can't exchange with itself, because an exchange has to occur between two or more people, that's kind of the definition of an exchange, there can't be market prices in this situation. I'll give an example of how market prices only exist because of exchanges. Look at the price of Bitcoin. It wasn't always $650 or whatever it happens to be today. It actually started off with no price at all. Bitcoin was once completely unvalued by the market. However, people started trading them for various reasons, partly to help test the Bitcoin network, partly to just collect cryptocurrency and you know whatever else floats their boat. Eventually, people started demanding slash offering money for these exchanges. Thus, Bitcoin gained a market price. As demand for Bitcoin increased much greater than the supply did, the prices rose past dollar parity and all the way into the hundreds of dollars. This process cannot happen under socialism. Salerno gives the example in his lecture of Soviet buildings being constructed without roofs. It turns out that the production quotas being given to nail factories didn't specify which nails to make. They just wanted raw weight output. So the nail factories produced a lot of big nails but no roofing nails because those roofing nails were less efficient to make with respect to how their production quota was being measured. Had the nail factories been able to see the massive price spike caused by the shortage of roofing nails, They probably would have produced more of them, but then again, they might not have because that would have hurt their production quota. But it's not all just shortages that occur when there are no prices. Soviet factories, according to Salerno, produced a ton of farm equipment that just sat rusting in fields because they were not needed. In other words, there was such an amazing surplus of farm equipment like tractors and stuff that they basically became worthless. Losing clarity in the price system is obviously a serious problem for any economy because it obscures the most valuable way to allocate resources, investments, etc. Nationalizing industries such as healthcare, railroads, the money supply, utilities, infrastructure, agriculture, student loans, and so on, all distort the value of various capital. 
And if the economy continues on its current trend of becoming more and more nationalized, we are sure to see greater instability as a result of the obfuscation of market prices. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please leave a thumbs up and be sure to go watch that lecture because it is awesome and it's an extremely good argument against socialism and why it can't work. I hope I did it justice, but just in case, please be sure to go watch that video. All right, thanks for watching one more time and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.